Hi, good morning. I'm Brett with Video Hot Rod and I have another tutorial for you. So from here on out, I'm going to use these six clips. So I'm, I'll just run through them real quick. Oh, nice, it's being slow on me. Here we go. And it's doing it again. Oh, well, whatever. Let's get this up to speed. Really? See if this one plays in real time. Here we go. Uh, no, it's still being dumb. That's better. All right, I don't know why I was doing that. So what I've got is a drone shot, then I've got some rocks, and then I've got Rachel, and then I've got some trucks, and then I've got more rocks from a different camera, actually, and then I've got these guys. I don't know why that's going so slow. Whatever. All right. So these all have slightly different colors. These colors are, these are actually the same rocks, but because they're shot from a different camera at a different kind of light, I guess, they, they look quite different. Um, we're not gonna worry about matching them. Instead, I am going to go on to the textures filter. This is a fun filter and I will put it over Rachel first. Okay, now you can see what it does it's kind of a mix between the threshold filter and with kind of a weird text, not text, but texture, with a weird texture overlay. This particular texture that it's using by default is kind of a wood grain look, and it gives it that uh, Old West feel, that Old West drawing feel that they would use. So it's kind of fun. I probably wouldn't use it on people. This particular texture by default would probably look way cooler here if we mess with it a little bit. And let's go ahead and mess with it a bit. That just looks so cool. That looks cool. Okay. Let's explain the textures filter. All right. We're putting it back over Rachel here. Okay. Like I said, by default, it has this weird wood grain effect. It kind of flashes and moves but pretty much you can take any video clip and stick it into this slot here and if you do it will create that as the texture and there's two functions that are kind of interesting or one function that's interesting in here that will give you a choice between two styles all right first off you have an amount so you can blend the texture if you wanted to do a film grain look of a specific film grain that you have like a textured film grain, this would be the way to do it. If you want it to just be flat out Wild West or whatever kind of weird texture you're going to throw in there, this is the way to do it. Alright, then you have a threshold and that's going to decide what's light and what's dark. Basically, because this is doing the, um, the threshold filter, you have a two color uh, you, you're basically remapping the colors to either dark or light. And so this is taking everything above a certain threshold and turning it into the light color and everything below a certain threshold to turn into the dark color. And that's what this threshold does right here. So here's the wood grain. It's flying all over the place. And this is the dark version of the wood grain. Okay, highlights is going to brighten the highlights or darken them. And shadows is going to do the same thing with the shadows. So if you did high shadows and low highlights, you'd actually have a little bit of an inverse here. Um, and if you did it the other way, there you go. Now the one interesting thing about this filter is, if you notice, there's a shadow between the two parts, between the light and the dark part. And I find that actually kind of interesting. It's it kind of gives it a a, uh, a separated I don't know what you would call that like a an overlay type feel to it. It's pretty cool. Okay, now here's the other part I was talking about: inlaid texture. And what this will do is it will remove the shadow, but it will also make it so that the texture doesn't move. See how it's doing that? 
Whereas before it was flashing through because what it does is it enlarges the texture and then randomly throws it here and there. And by using the inlaid texture, it fills the entire clip with it and then doesn't, doesn't move it around. Okay, let's go ahead and throw in a different source. Let's use this as the source. So I'll click on this, click on the clip I want, hit apply clip, and you get this weird kind of effect. This probably works better with subtle textures rather than this, because this is a little strange. But if I hit the inlaid texture, I can see kind of a discrepancy between the light and the dark. Let's throw the highlights up all the way and the darks down all the way, and you can see the discrepancy between the two. And then on the colors of the texture, it's going to bend the light a certain way. So you can see the light is bent here in these areas and bent differently here. This this line of her face is not lining up with this line of her face. Um, so on and so forth. So that's the textures filter. I generally like it better as the default. I don't throw another texture in there, although you could. I've, I've never personally used it, but you might find some fun things to do with that. All right. Next, we'll go over the teal and orange filter. And that's, a, that's an interesting one. It's actually one of my favorites. All right. Thank you very much for watching. This is Brett from Video Hot Rod. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.